Hello, uh, my name is Adam Abubakar and I am the segment director of Film Pop. We're lucky enough to be joined this evening by Mark Corbin. Just a note before we start that this talk and performance are best enjoyed with headphones. Mark Corvin is a Toronto-based composer for film and television. He's best known for his work on the 2016 period horror film, The Witch, which won the Best Director Award at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival for director Robert Eggers, and went on to earn $40 million at the box office. Mark also scored Eggers' follow-up film, The Lighthouse, starring Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. It won the Critics' Prize at the Cannes Film Festival in 2019. His scores have been nominated 14 times for Canadian Film and Television Awards, winning several times. He's also composed feature film scores for acclaimed directors Deepa Mehta, Patricia Rosima, and Vincenzo Natale. Mark is also a multi-instrumentalist specializing in world music and the inventor of the apprehension engine, which we are here to discuss today. Hi, Mark. Hi, Adam. Uh, so I think we'll get right into some questions. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with what the apprehension engine looks like, uh, we'll be getting a better look shortly. Um, it's a beautiful design object. Uh, can you speak to the instrument's industrial design and who helped you with it? Sure. Um, I originally came up with uh, an idea for um, a, a box that would create several different sounds, would have several different elements in it, such as um, it's sort of like a Foley, uh, Foley box. So Foley in that, you know, the, the, uh, all the elements that you use to create sound in film, like footsteps or creaking or rain or whatever. But I wanted sort of a musical version of that. So I wrote a very a primitive sort of a Homer Simpson quality uh, sketch of what I was looking for. And I handed it to my uh, luthier friend, uh, Tony Duggan Smith, and he put it together for me. And this is what we wound up with. That's great. Um, and how frequently do you use it in your day-to-day -day work as a composer? Um, not that much, just on, on occasion. It was actually inspired by The Witch because uh, what I learned from working for Rob Eggers, he was very much into acoustic sounds and just didn't want anything at all electronic. So it really took me down this path um, to create um, soundscapes in a very acoustic, organic way. And just, just sort of to get away from all the electronics um, and the superficiality of, of a lot of music making that goes on these days and just get real Get your hands, get your hands dirty, as it were. Um, you probably get asked this question uh, a lot, but uh, musician Brian Eno has reportedly called the Apprehension Engine the most terrifying musical instrument of all time. Um, I couldn't find a source for that, but I'd still agree with that statement. Um, but I'm wondering if you think that there are elements of humor and play to the instrument. You know, last year's film, The Lighthouse, uh, which you also scored, um, was arguably hilarious. Um, I can't help but think it must have been really fun to score. Uh, would you say that playing the Apprehension Engine is, is fun to play? Oh, definitely, definitely. It's, it's really sort of a release for me mm -hmm. because it's, it's capable of, of going to really dark places and you can sort of get all that, all that out, you know, and mm -hmm. once, once you played it for, for an hour, you know, there's a real sort of a cathartic thing that goes on once you've finished. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I really enjoy especially the uh, the sonic adventure of it, you know, just really digging deep and, and trying to find sounds that that I've never discovered before. Well, I was going to ask too, um, you've sort of addressed this question uh, though, um, in terms of like your, like a composer's standard arsenal of instruments and pedals, like, um, had you ever tried to achieve any of what the apprehension gives you before the apprehension engine existed? I mean, and how much easier does this instrument make those? Like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's totally clear. Well, I'll, I'll speak a little on, on that actually. It, it came from, the idea for it came from se several things that I've played around with over the years. Uh, like one of, one of the things is uh, this, this device called an Ebo, um, okay. which, is, which you play with uh, electric guitar. It's basically a sustainer. You put it on your, on your string and it sustains your string, but but I play it in very unorthodox ways where I, you know, I jam it into the, the pickup on the guitar and, and get it to howl and scream. And, and I'm, I'm really on a journey of discovery on what this thing can do, what, what it was never intended to do most of these things. Oh, great. So there's uh, that and also um, a spring reverb from a guitar amp 
um, which, which I enjoyed just sort of slapping with my hands and things like that. And I thought, well, what if I took the Ebo to this and, and had those springs sustain? Um, and then uh, a friend of mine plays uh, Medieval Hurdy-Gurdy, which is a crank, a cranked string instrument. It, it bows the string with this crank. It goes right back to the, uh, the Middle Ages. And I thought, uh, well, maybe we should incorporate that into the instrument too, you know? So it came from many different sources. I, I tried to pilfer from as many different people as I could. I hope you don't mind if we, from here, get to the performance. Would that be all right, Mark? Yeah, sure, that'd, that'd be fine. Love okay, to. excellent. Um, so uh, just to note that we'll be back on Zoom after the performance for a Q&A, and we encourage anyone watching uh, to submit questions through Zoom, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. Thanks, Mark. Cool. See you soon. Cool. Oh, uh, please check this out on the Film Pop uh, page.
Okay, he's ready to go. I'm gonna go up with you, Adam. Thanks. Okay. I guess we can turn this off. Yeah, we no, don't turn that. it on, it's nice. No, we don't need that. It's fine. And I'm here. Uh, Excellent. And I think we might. Oh, no, I can't hear Adam. What? I can't hear. Oh, oh. great. He's hey. He must touch. Oh, great. We're here. We're good. Hey, Mark. Okay. Hey, uh, so thank you so much for that. Can you no, say something? Okay. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. Can you guys hear me? Oh, I know why. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got it. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. That was so great. Oh, you're most welcome. That was, it's so much fun to do. I'm so glad. Um, so we have some questions, but I'm going to get into some of my own first, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I noticed that you operate uh, many parts of the instrument at once or in quick succession. Uh, and I'm wondering, the few times you use the instrument in the studio, is that something you do as well? Or is that very much a, a live performative? No, uh, that's, it's, a, it's a live performance thing, really, because it was, uh, uh, you know, once I started performing live with it, mm -hmm. the whole thing becomes, how do I not bore people to death? Okay. So you're, you're always looking for ways to make it, try to make it a little bit more visual and, and try to have lots of things going on, anything to to keep people listening because it, you know, it, it can be a difficult experience for, uh, you know, half hour, 40 minutes of, of highly dissonant music like this. So you got to oh, do yeah. what you can, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, well, on that note, I kind of wanted to say, and please forgive me for saying this, but it, it kind of looks like the instrument takes a bit of a beating uh, during the performance. And I was just wondering if it has to be maintained, do components have to be switched out? Uh, do you have to tune it every time? Uh, yeah, I, I have my own weird system of, uh, of tuning. I mean, it's just, it makes no sense to anyone and it doesn't even make any sense to me. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it does take a real, a real beating for sure. Um, and it's, and it's, con it's sort of, it's almost like the medieval in instrument that sort of inspired some of it in that there's always tweaking your, um, because it's, it's, an, it's not like, you know, a guitar where they, they establish this thing that mm. uh, you know everyone knows how to fix and you know how to set it up and that's that's what it is. This is you know inventing the wheel kind of thing where where you're you're always adjusting, and always figuring out what the problem is. It's it's a troubleshooting nonstop. But do I understand correctly that it's not well maybe not being mass produced, but you're actually producing units now for other interested uh, musicians? Yeah, yeah, my my friend Tony has been uh, has has been producing them and, and selling them, which is which, which is great. Uh, yeah, a few, a few uh, fairly well-known people have bought one, like Trent Reznor bought one. Oh, really? And a few, few people like, like that, so it's, it's, it's good to see. But I think a lot of them, including Trent, uh, bought it thinking that it was, uh, you know, you just turn it on, plug it in, and start playing, but it's not. It's really a, a journey of, uh, of discovery. It really, it really is. It's not just sitting there on the piano and playing a note. It does not work work like that. Sure. Um, I gotta see about. Um, let's see, finding if any questions. I'm not sure we have any from the audience, which is very surprising. Um, let me just make sure of that. I think that might actually be it, Mark. Um, okay. But that was so wonderful. I'm just gonna make sure one last time. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Uh, just a whole lot, just a whole lot of thank yous in the chat. Uh, so I, I'll ex I'll extend those to you. Sure, and yeah, I extend my your welcomes. Very cool. Um, we're really gonna have to bring you to town. Uh, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be the next step for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I want to say thank you to you again, but I also want to say thank you to Kathy and, and the boys for all of their tech support. Uh, yes, she says she's right here. She <laughs> says you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> just, just mark on camera then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The boys went, up, the boys went upstairs already. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're off watching TV or they're something. Like, not another <laughs> Excellent.
Cool. Okay. Well, um, we'll be in touch, I hope, to bring it to town and sometime soon when that cool. becomes possible again. Awesome. Great. Well, Great. take care. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Oh, I'm going to go on to